day to you, our dear Dauntless viewers. I know that you're all excited for another animated series featuring your favorite stories and poems. So without further ado, let's get started. Before anything else, we would like to give an insight of what this animation is all about. As we proceed with the video, we will be first talking about poetry and its meaning and origin. We will be talking about the poem, Life Doesn't Frighten Me by Maya Angelou, the author's background and discuss what underlying meaning and lessons we have gathered through the poem's message. After that, we will be having a short assessment of lunch insights are about the poem and lastly, a self-reflection that will connect the poem to real life. What is poetry? It is a form of literature that makes use of written qualities of language such as metaphors, fun aesthetics, meters, rhymes, and symbolism to elicit eloquently written and imaginative language. It is derived from the Greek word poetes, which means to make or creating. It is also known as the earliest records of literature in most cultures. The poem Life Doesn't Frighten Me is written by African-American poet, memoirist, and actress Maya Angelou is a part of her 40-page children's book that contains her other works and illustrations. It was originally published in 1993. She is known for her first autobiographical work which is I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings. Life Doesn't Frighten Me is a 14 stanza rhyming poem that focuses on a child's perspective. The speaker in the poem discusses the handful of scenarios in her life that she fears of and how she assures herself that she isn't frightened by any of it at all. It reinforces the idea that we are braver than life's darkness. Life Doesn't Frighten Me, written by Maya Angelou, is one of the memorable poems that she has written that focuses on the perspective of a child. The poem takes the reader into the child's thought, wherein, despite the young age, display inexplicable courage. The speaker in the poem repeatedly chants the praise, Life Doesn't Frighten Me at All in each stanza. After talking about the things, that do seem frightening such as the shadows on the wall and the noises down the hall creating an uplifting and motivating mood while breathing. This repeatedly pattern of the child saying life doesn't frighten me at all after mentioning the things she should fear connects to the reader as everybody possesses their fears and anxiety. But dwelling in them would do more harm than facing it instead. At the end of the poem, the repeated chanting of the speaker that life doesn't frighten them at all didn't seem like a reminder anymore, but rather a reassurance to themselves that they are bigger than their fears. The poem is considered as a nursery rhyme because of the words that the author had used as if she wrote it as something that can be read, heard, remembered, draw inspiration from, and understood by both children and those of age as well. It is amazing that she managed to make the poem reach readers of all ages, which goes to show that the author understands that not only children possess fears, but as well as adults. It can be said that underneath the nursery-like rhymes of the words, there is an underlying meaning of those phrases that those who are of age can decipher because in life, as we age, our fears go from monsters underneath our beds to the monsters that live in our heads. We go through different phases and develop deeper fears as we go. But to hear reassuring words from people just like Maya Angelou's words makes us realize that life isn't truly frightening. It is hard work. While reading the poem of Maya Angelou, I can help but have questions in my mind. Why didn't life frighten her at all? Why didn't the writer fear ghosts or bad dogs barking too loud? And the question that hits my curiosity most is, why doesn't she even fear death? For me, her poems means that she doesn't even fear even the scariest thing you could imagine here on earth. Maybe because she has encountered experiences throughout her life that made her tougher than anyone could ever imagine. 
Aside from that, she can now manage to conquer all the dark days ahead that might bring her down because she knows that she can go through it and see another bright, golden sunset and hopeful sky. Her fear didn't bother her because it was hope that made her fearless. Other than that, maybe the reason behind her toughness and fearlessness are her experience that are worse among the worst things, yet because of that, she is now much stronger, just like a knight arrayed with armor. Through the given breakdown of the poem, it is seen that the purpose why the author wrote it is to teach children and even readers that love can conquer all, and every mountain can be moved as long as the lovers preserve. With this, I will ask you one question. From your perspective, what do you think is pure love? Life and goals are meant to be scary, terrifying even. It has so many unexpected twists and turns that all our experiences were part of the plan. The poem shows no fear but determination confidence and strength in overcoming the trials in life. Somehow, the change in life is inevitable. We may encounter challenges from a life we have had, a life that we must not fear but conquer it. Although, what would life be when we fear nothing and living? From the title, Life Doesn't Frighten Me At All, it seems to me that experiences like this build us to become stronger. We learn whose opinions matter and become aware of whom to trust. The character in the poem has already come this far. She went through many things that is why we shall not stop now. There is nothing to fear from reaching our desires because life doesn't frighten us. It challenges us. Just in the same way, look at life like waves. It is beautiful but chaotic. It is ferocious. Life can be hard. It does not come always easy. We cannot see the calmness of the water that waves so hard. But at the same time, she fears nothing and remains stagnant. There will always be tough days that will overshadow the good. Just that we should not fear stepping out of our comfort zone as long as we are not putting someone down. As humans, we are often afraid to endeavor new things, new experiences, especially ones that we have never done before. Furthermore, we are much more accountable for the experiences that need decision making, which gives us struggles but shows us the best unexpected surprises. Though, if it scares us, it might be a good thing to try and not fear things because you will never know the taste of oyster if you do not want to try it at all. That is to say, if you let that fear manipulate you, you do not have perseverance, meaning you are not growing mentally and emotionally. Welcome back our dearest Dauntless viewers. Did you enjoy our first animated video for the poem Life Doesn't Frighten Me? Did you make feel braver than before? If so, then you are for sure going to love our next poem because it is all about the most beautiful thing in the world. Love. But before that, we will tell you what this animation video is all about. You will be introduced to a form of poetry that was present in the 18th century because it is connected to the poem The Owl and the Pussycat by Edward Lear. And after that, a question will be asked for you. Lastly, at the end of the video, we will have another reflection time with what we have learned from the poem. In the first part of our video animation, we talked about the definition of poetry, its Greek origin, and that poetry is known as one of the oldest records of literature in most cultures. Now, we will be discussing a form of poetry which is called nonsense poetry. 
It is a poetic form seen throughout nursery rhymes, limericks, as well as old Anglo-Saxon riddles. It is mainly nonsensical because it creates a playful language and a very humorous piece. This is mostly written for children's literature as it is often light-hearted in tone and written to entertain and amuse them. Its modern forms date back from the time of the 19th century or during the Victorian era. In 1871, nonsense songs, stories, botany, and alphabets by English artist, author, and poet Edward Lear was originally published. He is known for his literary nonsense verses and prose, and he is also considered as the popularizer of the limerick. His most known work from the book is The Owl and the Pussycat, which is a nonsense poem and is often used as an example of Victorian nonsense poetry. It contains a love story between an owl and a pussycat who were traveling together and later on got married along the journey in a strange island. The poem is highly acclaimed because Lear made use of animals with human qualities as the characters. The poem implies the message that despite the peculiarities of the two animals, their love persevered, wherein these messages are also applicable in real life, teaching readers that love can tackle every hindrance and that there is no form of discrimination such as race, caste, appearances when it comes to love. The poem The Owl and the Pussycat is a poem written by Edward Lear. It tells the love between the owl and the pussycat and their successful marriage despite the differences that they both possess. In the first stanza, the owl and the pussycat are heading on a voyage to the unknown destination. The owl possesses pure intention toward the pussycat wherein the latter was greatly moved. By that, they decided to get married. They prepared for their adventures, traveling far and wide to seek for a ring. The genuineness of their bond made them strong, as they sailed for a year and a day. After the long search, they finally met a pig and bought the ring that was on his nose. And of course, the owl and the pussycat lived happily ever after, as they finally got married in a faraway land dancing under the moonlight with overflowing love. The character of the poem is very appropriate for children because the author uses animals that act like humans. The poem is considered an nursery rhyme because there's a rhyme scheme in every stanza, like a musical reading poem and the short repetition of words. The author adds nonsensical nature and gives magic to love to his poem so that the readers can imagine, give inspiration, and be understood by all ages. There are a lot of questions that I put in mind while reading the poem. Why did the author use an owl and a cat as the characters, even though they are very different in nature? Owls have wings while cats don't. There's a big difference between their appearances and the way they live their lives. From my own perspective, the author's poem possesses deeper meaning and we need to solve it like a puzzle. It shows that love has no boundaries nor limitations despite the differences of the both of you. The cat and the owl are different from one another, but love created a strong bond between them. Moreover, when they sail both for a year and a day, this means that people who love each other will fight and wait against all odds that may come their way. As long as they have each other, nothing on this earth will separate them. Furthermore, the poem mirrors reality because it tells that no matter how different and incompatible two people are, they can become lovers as long as they find true happiness and genuine love from the relationship they develop. Through the given breakdown of the poem, it is seen that the purpose why the author wrote it is to teach children and even readers that love can conquer all, and every mountain can be moved as long as the lovers preserved. With this, I will ask you one question. From your perspective, what do you think is pure love? Happiness is a fleeting feeling based on faith. Are you looking for happiness, joy, 
and fulfillment in love, just like an owl and a pussycat? Hence, their love stays with you even through hardship despite doom, because it is founded in meaning. Apparently, as this poem is about love, it shows deep and mutual affection and fondness of owl and pussycat who tie a knot in a bizarre wonderland where there is joy, contentment, and happiness all around. The story between two such different creatures was fascinating, sweet, and truly beautiful to behold. Just in the same way, the author has given them human qualities to convey a message that every individual belonging to any races, cultural diversity, and physical differences can fall in love with each other. The poem implies that love is love, manifesting true love. It does not have to be manipulative because love is a sense of feeling that comes out naturally. There should be no restrictions in it. That is to say, the heart knows who it wants. At the same time, there are things you cannot force because love is a boundless fool. The poem offers us a world where there is no sorrow, suffering, or obstacles but living a permanent joy and lifelong companionship. To comprehend, this statement in the story Beautiful Pea Green Boat symbolizes their honor, hope, and a new beginning, while dancing in the moonlight represents ultimate happiness and freedom. The reason for this occurrence, this is our mission to break down the stigma of losing yourself to the wrong person, but to be found in true love contentment, and happiness.